you wonderful and lovely people, it's Lynette here. If you're new to the channel, then welcome, and if you're a regular, then welcome back. So the other day I received a message from a longtime supporter, a friend and fellow YouTuber, the lovely It's Me Phil. And this is the message that I got. Hey Lynette, love your channel, some fantastic videos, especially the Apple Tower at Ride video. That was fantastic and you know why. After multiple views, I had a thought. You find me in my Audi A5 Coupe, a car that I absolutely love and adore. And it got me thinking, if I send you these photographs, would you be able to make an art from the photographs for me? If I like it, I'll buy it off you, of course. Because what I'd love to be able to do is hang it here with all of my other artwork on the wall. Are you up for the challenge? Thank you, Phil. Challenge accepted. And for someone who hasn't drawn a car since primary school age, when I used to draw cars like this, what a challenge this is going to be. So first things first, I'm going to be working on my Canton A4 cold pressed 300 GSM watercolour paper, some black fine liners, various size nibs and a Mungyo 48 pan set and some Payne's Grey buff titanium and shadow violet, all from Daniel Smith. These are the main materials that I'll be using. Anything else that I use throughout the video, I will list in the description below and as we go along. As you can see, I started off with a basic sketch in pencil first. As this is not a subject that I'm overly familiar with drawing, I wanted to make sure that I had the basic shape, placement and perspective right before I began adding any permanent pen lines. I started off with a 01 black fine liner that's waterproof, which is incredibly important considering I'm going to be using watercolour paints. Initially, I'm just going to go over the most important lines that form the shape of the car, so that I don't lose any of the sketch once I start laying down some paint. And then later on in the sketch, I'll be going back over some of these outlines with a thicker fine liner, over any lines that need to be any thicker or darker, and also to bring out any details. Once I have the basic outline drawn out in ink, I can then erase the pencil lines surrounding the main sketch, as they're no longer needed, and I don't want any of them potentially showing through the watercolour paint. I'm happy with the progress so far. However this turns out, I think I can see that my car drawing skills have somewhat evolved. Phil's car being white and so not being very colourful, I'm going to have to inject some colour into the painting around the car, which will hopefully make the car pop off the paper. So I add a wash of clean water underneath the bottom of the car to begin with and then I start adding some French grey underneath and start building up some shadows. I also add the same grey to the hubcaps. And then, whilst still wet, I start dropping in some Payne's Grey. I'm simply dropping the pigment into the paper and then seeing what happens. Whilst I leave the underside of the car to dry, I add the same Payne's Grey to the grill, I think that's what it's called, on the front of the car and then a very light wash to the windows. If there's any car terminology that I do get wrong, then please feel free to correct me because as someone who doesn't drive, can't drive and probably never will drive, I have no idea. I messaged Phil several times asking if there was any particular style of painting or colour use that he would particularly prefer and each time he responded that it's all completely up to me with what direction I take this challenge in. Now, I'm not going to lie, I think not having that direction or that brief beforehand made this task a little bit more daunting, to begin with anyway. But then once I started relaxing into the painting process, being given that level of freedom made the whole process a lot more fun. And as the painting progressed, I started getting a lot more experimental too. The couple of things that I was most concerned about was one, getting the shape of the car initially right, and then the wheels. With the way that the car is angled, that wheel is very much where my eye was drawn to first, so if I mess that up, then it's going to be pretty noticeable to the viewer. I also wanted to kind of blend and merge the wheels into the shadows of the underneath of the car, and try to achieve that without making a complete and utter mess. <laughs> and with the shadows, I wanted to add some extra colour other than the paint's grey and the grey that I've already used, so I decided to add some purple tones with some shadow violet which not only do I add to the shadows, but I also add to the grill, the lights and the windows. Oh, and the hubcaps. And then I start using a very diluted and light wash of the same shadow violet to start bringing out some of the contours of the car. 
With looking at the reference photo that Phil provided for me, I think he must have taken the photo either late afternoon or early evening because there were some really nice warm tones on the bonnet of the car and at the front. And as I'm trying to add as much colour to a white car as possible, this was the turning point when I stopped being so cautious with my approach and let myself be a bit more experimental. To bring out those warm tones, I started adding some buff titanium and then I started dropping in some raw sienna too, letting both colours blend into each other on the paper. I then leave that area to dry so I don't make the car look like it's gold to add a little bit more of a wash to the windows before working on the aero behind the car. In my opinion, things are going well, but it's all looking a bit safe and a bit flat. To help make the car stand out on the painting, I add a wash of clean water first and then begin spreading and plopping down some indigo to the background and then adding some dollops of shadow violet into the indigo and letting the paint spread and mix in with the water and into each other. I also then add some paint splatters. With all my basic washes down, I went and had a brew, let everything dry before going back over my outlines and adding some details. With still being undecided with what direction of how much detail I was going to add to the windows, I started adding some basic shapes from the interior of the car with a koi grey brush pen. This one is a warm grey and I make some basic shapes to sort of gesture the fact that there's a seat and a dashboard. And then with a 05 black fine liner, I start adding some line work underneath the car to start building up some shade and texture to the ground and then going over any lines that I feel need to be thickened up and then any areas that need to be darker. I wanted the underneath of the car to be incredibly dark, so I got some Indian ink as I thought it would help provide the contrast that I'm looking for. To do this, I'm using a really cheap paintbrush that I got from like a pound shop or a dollar store as I didn't really fancy ruining my decent paintbrushes and I'm painting it on just like I do with watercolour paints. Also using the tip of the paintbrush to sort of scratch and move the ink across the paper. I use the Indian ink on the wheels also to bring out the darker aspects of the hubcaps and the tyres. I also had a pot of Windsor & Newton Cobalt Blue ink now unfortunately I haven't used it in a very long time and it had dried up but by adding a lot of water I could fortunately reactivate some of the ink as I wanted to use it to bring out the shade on the side of the car. I go back in with some Indian ink on the windows because I finally commit to the idea that I want the interior of the vehicle to be quite ambiguous and dark so that all the focus is on the body of the car. And then once again, I leave everything to dry and go and have another brew before I can start adding any detail to the grill at the front. For the registration plate, I thought it'd be a kind of nice idea if I give Phil a personalized number plate. And with his own personalised registration plate complete, all that's left for me to do is add my signature. So I hope Phil thinks I rose to the challenge as well as all of you watching. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. This was a challenge that definitely took me out of my comfort zone. But if any of you lovely people have a challenge that you'd like to set me, then also let me know in the comments. Order will be restored as I have another sketching around the Isle of Wight video coming up very soon on the channel. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, then hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, do me a favor and go and head over to Phil's channel too and give him some love. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care.